good evening. This is Abyss Whispers. Tonight I want to read a selection of poems from In Hospital by William Ernest Henley. I hope you enjoy this and have a good sleep. Enter patient. The morning mists still haunt the stony street. The northern summer air is shrill and cold. And lo, the hospital, grey, quiet, old, where life and death, like friendly chafers, meet. Through the loud spaciousness and draughty gloom, a small, strange child, who aged yet so young, her little arm besplinted and bislung, precedes me gravely to the waiting room. I limp behind, my confidence all gone. The grey-haired soldier porter waves me on, and on I crawl, and still my spirits fail. Tragic meanness seems so to environ these corridors and stairs of stone and iron. Cold, naked, clean, half workhouse and half jail. Waiting. The square squat room. The cellar on promotion. Drab to the soul. Drab to the very daylight. Plasters astray in unnatural looking tinware. Scissors and lint in apothecary's jars. Here on a bench. A skeleton would writhe from, angry and sore, I wait to be admitted, wait till my heart is led upon my stomach, while at their ease, two dressers do their chores, one has a probe, it feels to me a crowbar, a small boy sniffs and shudders after stone. A poor old tramp explains his poor old ulcers. Life is, I think, a blunder and a shame. Interior The gaunt brown walls look infinite in their decent meanness. There is nothing of home in the noisy kettle, the fulsome fire. The atmosphere suggests the trail of a ghostly druggist, dressings and lint on the long lean table. Whom are they for? The patients yawn, or lie as in training for a shroud and coffin. A nurse in the corridor scolds and wrangles. It's grim and strange. Far footfalls clank. The bad burn waits with his head unbandaged. My neighbor chokes in the clutch of chloral. Oh, a gruesome world. Before. Behold me waiting, waiting for the knife, a little while, and at a leap, I storm. The thick, sweet mystery of chloroform, the drunken dark, a little death in life. The gods are good to me, I have no life. No innocent child to think of as I near the fatal minute. Nothing all too dear unmans me from my bout of passive strife. 
Yet am I tremulous, and a trifle sick, and face to face with chance, I shrink a little. My hopes are strong, my will is something weak. Here comes the basket, thank you, I am ready. But gentlemen, my porters, life is brittle. You carry Caesar and his fortunes. Steady. Operation. You are carried in a basket, like a carcass from the shambles, to the theater, a coke pit, where they stretch you on a table, and they bid you close your eyes. And they mask you with a napkin, and the anesthetic reaches hot and subtle through your being, and you gasp and reel and shudder in a rushing, swaying rapture, while the voices at your elbow fade, receding fainter. Lights about you shower and tumble, and your blood seems crystallizing, etched and vibrant, yet within you racked and hurried back and forward. Then the lights grow fast and furious, and you hear a noise of waters, and you wrestle blind and dizzy, in an agony of effort, till a sudden lull accepts you, and you sound an utter darkness, and awaken with a struggle on a hushed, attentive audience. Like as a flame lit, blanketed in smoke, so through the anesthetic shows my life, so flashes and so fades my thought at strife, with the strong stupor that I heave and choke and sicken at, it is so foully sweet. Faces look strange from space and disappear, far voices, sudden, loud, offend my ear, and hush as sudden, then my senses fleet, all were a blank, save for this dull, new pain that grinds my leg and foot, and brokenly, Time and the place glimpse on to me again, and unsurprised, out of uncertainty, I wake, relapsing somewhat faint and vain, to an immense, complacent dreamery. Vigil lived on one's back in the long hours of repose. Life is a practical nightmare, hideous asleep or awake, shoulders and loins ache, ache, and the mattress run into boulders and hummocks, glows like a kiln while the bedclothes, tumbling, importunate, Daft, ramble and roll, and the gas screwed to its lowermost, an inevitable atom of light haunts, and a stentor sleeper snores me to hate and despair. All the old time surges malignant before me, 
old voices, old kisses, old songs blossom derisive about me, while the new days pass me in endless procession, a pageant of shadows, silently, leeringly wending, on and still on, still on. Far in the stillness, a cat languishes loudly, a cinder falls, and the shadows lurch to the leap of the flame. The next man to me turns with a moan, and the snorer, the drug like a rope at his throat, gasps, gurgles, snorts himself free as the night nurse, noiseless and strange, her bullseye half lanterned and apron, whispering me, are ye no sleeping yet? Passes, list slippered and peering round, and is gone. Sleep comes at last, sleep full of dreams and misgivings, broken with brutal and sordid voices and sounds that impose on me ere I can wake to it, the unnatural, intolerable day. Staff Nurse, Old Style The greater masters of the commonplace, Rembrandt and good Sir Walter, only these could paint her all to you. Experienced ease and antique liveliness and ponderous grace. The sweet old roses of her sunken face. The depth and malice of her sly green eyes. The broad Scots tongue that flatters, scolds, defies. The thick Scots wit that fells you like a maze. These thirty years she has been nursing here, some of them under a sign, her hero still. Much is her worth, and even more is made of her. Patients and students hold her very dear. The doctors love her, tease her, use her skill. They say the chief himself is half afraid of her. Lady Probationer Some three or five or seven and thirty years. A Roman nose, a dimpling double chin, dark eyes, and shy that, ignorant of sin, are yet acquainted, it would seem, with tears. A comely shape, a slim, high-colored hand, graced rather oddly with a signet ring, a bashful air becoming everything, a well-bred silence always at command, her plain print gown, prim cap, and bright steel chain look out of place on her, and I remain absorbed in her as in a pleasant mystery. Quick, skillful, quiet, soft speech and touch. Do you like nursing? Yes, sir, very much. Somehow, I rather think she has a history. Staff Nurse, New Style Blue-eyed and bright of face, but waning fast into the sear of virginal decay. I view her as she enters day by day, as a sweet sunset almost overpassed, kindly and calm, patrician to the last. Superbly falls her gown of sober grey, and on her chignon's elegant array, 
the plainest cap is somehow touched with caste. She talks Beethoven, frowns disapprobation at Balzac's name, sighs in at poor George Sands, knows that she has exceedingly pretty hands, speaks Latin with a right accentuation, and gives that need as one who understands. Draught, counsel, diagnosis, exhortation. Clinical. Through the corridors, echoes, louder and nearer, comes a great shuffling of feet. Click, every one of you, straighten your quilts and be decent. Here's the professor. In he comes first, with the bright look we know. From the broad, white brows, the kind eyes soothing yet nerving you. Here at his elbow, white capped and white aproned, the nurse. Towel on arm, and her inkstand fretful with quills. Here in the rock, anyhow. Searching along, loads, duffers, exquisites, students and prigs, whiskers and foreheads, scarf pins and spectacles, hustles the class, and they ring themselves round the first bed, where the chief, his dressers and clerks at attention, bends in inspection already. So shows the ring, seen from behind round a conjurer, doing his pitch in the street. High shoulders, low shoulders, broad shoulders, narrow ones, round, square, and angular, surrey and shove. All from within, a voice, gravely and weightily fluent sounds and then ceases, and suddenly, look at the stress of the shoulders. Out of the quiver of silence, over the hiss of the spray, comes a low cry, and the sound of breath, quick and taken through teeth, clenched in resolve, and the master breaks from the crowd, and goes, wiping his hands to the next bed, his pupils flocking and whispering behind him. Now one can see, case number one sits rather pale, with his bedclothes stripped up, and showing his foot, alas, for God's image, swaddled in wet white lint, Brilliantly hideous with red. Casualty As with varnish, red and glistening dripped his hair. His feet looked rigid. Raised, he settled stiffly sideways. You could see his hurts were spinal. He had fallen from an engine and been dragged along the metals. It was hopeless and they knew it. So they covered him and left him. As he lay by fits half sentient, inarticulately moaning, with his stockinged soles protruded stark and awkward from the blanket. To his bed there came a woman, stood and looked, and sighed a little, and departed without speaking, as himself a few hours later. I was told it was his sweetheart. They were on the eve of marriage. She was quiet as a statue, but her lip was grey and rhythm. 
of a Caesar From the winter's grey despair From the summer's golden languor Death, the lover of life Frees us forever Inevitable, silent, unseen Everywhere, always Shadow by night and as light in the day Signs she is at last to her chosen And as she waves them forth Sorrow and joy lay by their looks and their voices Set down their hopes and are made one in the dim forever Into the winter's grey delight Into the summer's golden dream Holy and high and impartial Death, the mother of life Mingles all men forever The chief His brow spreads large and placid And his eye is deep and bright With steady looks that still Soft lines of tranquil thought his face fulfill His face at once benign and proud and shy If envy scout, if ignorance deny His faultless patience, his unyielding will Beautiful gentleness and splendid skill Innumerable gratitudes reply his wise rare smile is sweet with certainty And seems in all his patience to compel Such love and faith as failure cannot quell We hold him for another Heracles Battling with custom, prejudice, disease As once the son of Zeus with death and hell Interlude Oh, the fun, the fun and frolic That the wind that shakes the barley Scatters through any whistle Tickled with artistic fingers Kate, the scrubber, forty summers Stout but supportive Treads a measure, grinning in herself a ballet Fixed as fate upon her audience Stumps are shaking, crutch supported Splinted fingers tap the rhythm And a head all helmed with plasters Wags a measured approbation Of their mattress life oblivious All the patients brisk and cheerful are encouraging the dancer and applauding the musician Dim the gaslights in the output of so many ardent smokers Full of shadow lurch the corners And the doctor peeps and passes There may be some suspicions of an alcoholic presence Take a sip of this, my woman New year comes but once a twelfth month Children, private ward Here in this dim, dull, double-bedded room I play the father to a brace of boys Ailing, but apt for every sort of noise Bed fast but brilliant yet with health and bloom Rodin, the Irishman, is seven past Blue-eyed, snub-nosed, chubby and fair of face Willie's but six and seems to like the place A cheerful little collier to the last They eat and laugh and sing and fight all day all night they sleep like dormice See them play at operations Rodin the professor
professor, saws, lectures, takes the artery up and ties. Lily, self-chloroformed with half-shut eyes, holding the limb and moaning. Case and dresser. Scrubber. She's tall and gaunt, and in her hard, sad face with flashes of the old phone's animation, there lowers the fixed and peevish resignation. Red of the past, where troubles came apace, she tells me that her husband, ere he died, saw seven of their children pass away and never knew the little lass at play out on the green in whom he's defied. Her kin dispersed, her friends forgot and gone. All simple faith, her honest Irish mind, scolding her spoiled young saint, she labors on telling her dreams taking her patient's part, trailing her coat sometimes, and you shall find no rougher, quainter speech, nor kinder heart. Visitor Her little face is like a walnut shell, with wrinkling lines. Her soft white hair adorns her withered brows in clean, straight curls like horns. And all about her clings an old sweet smell. Prim is her gown, and a Quaker like her shawl. Well might her bonnets have been born on her. Can you conceive? A fairy godmother, the subject of a strong religious call. In snow or shine, from bed to bed she runs, all twinkling smiles and texts and pious tales. Her mittened hands that ever give or pray, bearing a sheaf of tracts, a bag of buns. A wheeled maid that sweeps the bridegroom's way, strong in a cheerful trust that never fails. Pastoral It's the spring, earth has conceived, and her bosom, teeming with summer, is glad. Vistas of change and adventure Through the green lands the grey roads go beckoning and winding Peopled with waves and melodious with harness bells jangling Jangling and twangling rough rhythms To the slow march of the stately great horses Whistled and shouted along White Fleets of cloud, argosies heavy with fruitfulness, sail the blue peacefully. Green flame the hedge grows, black birds are buckling, and white and wet winds sway the tall poplars. Pageants of color and fragrance pass the sweet meadows and view it. Walks the mild spirit of May, visibly blessing the world. Oh, the brilliance of blossoming orchards. Oh, the savor and thrill of the woods, when their leafage is stirred by the flight of the angel of rain. Loud lows the steer, in the fallows rooks are alert. And the books gurgle and tingle and trill Through the gloamings, under the 
rare shy stars, boy and girl wander, dreaming in darkness and dew. It's the spring. A sprightliness feeble and squalid wakes in the ward, and I second, impotent, winter at heart. Nocturne At the barren heart of midnight When the shadow shuts and opens As the loud flames pulse and flutter I can hear a sister leaking Dripping, dropping In a rhythm, rough, unequal Half melodious like the measures aped from nature in the infancy of music. Like the buzzing of an insect, still irrational, persistent. I must listen, 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 in a passion of attention, till it taps upon and my very life goes dripping, dropping, dripping, drip, drip, dropping. In the drip drop of the sister.